Hey, I'm PH, and welcome to another episode of Good Bible Knowledge with PhD. In this set of videos, I want to answer common questions about the Bible in fun and creative ways, and I hope you find these videos helpful for your own spiritual journey in Jesus. So, let's get started. How did Saul become king? In 1 Samuel, we're introduced to Samuel, the last judge of Israel. Samuel was a very good leader. He got rid of all the idols. Yay! He defeated the Philistines. Yay! He raised up a stone, and he brought peace to the land. Yay! When Samuel became old, the elders came to him with an important request. They wanted a king. Now, having a king was not a bad thing. God promised one day that he would bring a great king to Israel, the Messiah, who would reign as God's chosen one. But there were several problems to the elders' request. First of all, they didn't ask God for a king. The reason they wanted a king was to be like all the other nations. Instead of trusting God to choose the time and the person, they demanded that Samuel appoint a king right away. This troubled Samuel greatly, and he went before the Lord in prayer. The Lord told Samuel to grant their request, saying, Do not be discouraged, for these stubborn people are not rejecting you. They are rejecting me as their king. While Samuel was passing through the hill country of Ephraim, God spoke to Samuel and said, Tomorrow I will send a man from the tribe of Benjamin to you, and you shall anoint him king over Israel. Samuel took a flask of oil and anointed Saul as king, just as the Lord commanded, and everyone rejoiced. Saul and his son Jonathan gathered the Israelites to face the Philistines at a place called Gilgal. As Saul waited for Samuel to offer the sacrifice, the Israelites were trembling in fear. Saul, tired of waiting, disobeyed the command of the Lord and offered the sacrifice himself. And just as he finished, Samuel arrived. Though Saul and Jonathan had a victory over the Philistines, Saul failed to honor God through obedience to his commands. Sometime later, God commanded Saul to defeat the Amalekites with very clear instructions to destroy everything they acquired. After the battle, Saul greeted Samuel, claiming he had done exactly as the Lord commanded. To which Samuel replied, What is that bleating that I hear? Again, Saul had failed to fully obey the commands of God. To this Samuel replied, Which is more important, an animal sacrifice or obeying the Lord's commands? Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. As Samuel departed, Saul grabbed his robe, causing it to tear. And Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom from your hands and will give it to another. And from that time on till the day of his death, Samuel was deeply grieved and never saw Saul again. Now Saul was a very successful king in the eyes of the people, but in the eyes of God he was a failure. He was a failure because he did not respect or love the Lord enough to obey him completely and therefore he was not fit to be God's chosen king of Israel. As we will see, eventually God will choose a king after his own heart, a man named David. And David would be the great, 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 great grandfather of the ultimate king from God, the king of kings, who would live in perfect obedience to the word of the Lord. And this is the Messiah, King Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, the King from heaven, would be obedient to the point of giving his life on the cross for the salvation for everyone who believes. Thanks for listening to another episode of Good Bible Knowledge. We'll see you next time.